Yeah. Okay. I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm just checking with uh, that we are live, and it seems that we are live. And uh, good afternoon to everybody if you are joining us um, on on Facebook, on a Google Hangout. If you're joining us on uh, YouTube, a very very good afternoon to you. My name is Aki Anastasiu. For those of you who don't know me, I'm on Talk Radio 702. I do a technology show called Technobyte, um, and we're doing something new, something new and something innovative. And uh, we are doing a live Google Hangout. So if you follow the Vodacom Twitter account. You'll see the uh, live URL link to the YouTube account. So technically, this is going out live on YouTube. And uh, we are going to be talking to the new CEO of Vodacom. He's with us, and he's smiling away in his office at the background, uh, Shamil Yusuf, who joined uh, Vodacom many years ago. He left and he went to Spain. He was the former managing director of Vodacom here in South Africa, and he was uh, seconded to Spain, where he um, took hold of the Vodafone network, and now he's back in South Africa. He's the new CEO of Vodacom. Uh, Shamil Yusuf, welcome. We are using technology, something that uh, would not have been possible to do uh, a few years ago, and you are in your office in Midrand, which looks absolutely spectacular. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Aki. Thank you very much. Listen, you've got a very fancy office in the background. Uh, do you mind just turning that camera a bit? Uh, I see there's a speed in the corner. There's red and blue and green and white uh, blocks. Do you want to just uh, show the um, social media users your office? Wow, pretty fancy. So that's where you sit over there. Okay, very nice. I like it. I like your office. Encapsulating, uh, the wall is really encapsulating our, uh, uh, you know, uh, three, three, three measures underpinning our strategy, which is speed, simplicity, and trust. Well, fantastic. Listen, uh, it's great to have you back in South Africa. Um, what does it feel like to be back, and how does South Africa compare to Spain, for example, on the on the uh, mobile network front? So, Aki, firstly, you know, it's always nice to be back home. Um, you know, South Africa's home, so, you know, always always great to, 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 to be back home. I think a really great experience being in, uh, being in Spain. Um, and, and really, you know, managing in a, in a situation where you had 34 competitors, uh, but also in an environment where, you know, the, the country is in, in, in an economic crisis, in, in recession at the moment. Um, so, you know, a very difficult uh, environment, a very difficult macro environment to, to, to manage in. Um, and, you know, if we, if we compare... Um, Mobile in South Africa versus Spain, I'd say South Africa is right up there and, and is very compatible in terms of uh, the introduction of, uh, of technologies, especially on, on, on 3G. I think, you know, obviously, if one looks at the LTE at the, at the moment, um, you know, I'd say that the spectrum and everything in, in Spain has already been made available, so, you know, they will be launching in, in, in 2014. Okay, well, that's interesting. That's interesting, and and uh, it, it must be quite interesting. You've been in this business for such a long time that you've just seen these, uh, you know, these devices and these networks evolve. It's actually crazy what we do with our mobile phones today. I mean, uh, you know, go back ten years ago, we were just making calls and sending SMSs. Today, you're tweeting, you're sending updates on Facebook, we're posting photographs, we're posting videos. It's a whole new, different ball game, isn't it? It's 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 completely a different ball game, and I mean, you know, you, you just got so many people using multiple devices now, and you know what what we're saying is that by twenty six by twenty fifteen, you have it, uh, the average person at least having five to six devices, and by twenty twenty, the average person will be having about sixteen different devices. Uh, you know, this I uh, I went to 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 a study at Oxford where they were busy working on this and. It was quite. It was quite fascinating about all the different things that you'll be able to do with uh, with uh, the technology going forward, or with, or with mobile going forward. Sixteen different devices. Are you talking? I hope you're not talking cell phones. You know, I can. I can't cope with two. I mean, imagine sixteen of them. But uh, Shamil, that, that's very interesting. And by the way, uh, those Vodacom customers who are joining us, and we are just talking to the customers out there, people on Twitter, people on Facebook, uh, at Vodacom. Uh, you can ask Shamil your question, your question to the CEO. It's a really informal session. It's not an interview of sorts. Uh, we're going to ask Shamil the questions that you have been asking. Uh, you, the consumer, you, the customer of Vodacom that you have in, in South Africa. Now, Shamil, 
the, the big thing with with uh, mobile networks, Vodacom, you know, you name it, whoever it might be, is 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 price. You know, um, prices have been coming down. We've seen the data prices coming down. Um, are you planning to bring the prices down even further on the Vodacom network? I think what we will always do, um, Aki, is, is to make sure that our prices are competitive. So, you know, we will, pricing will come down. I think pricing will continue to come down as, as, uh, as, the, as the years go by. Uh, but what we will ensure is that we, we will have competitive tariffs in all different segments in the market. Okay. Uh, the, the other thing, I mean, the, the obviously criticism is um, you're talking about the, the, the tariffs and all that sort of thing. Sometimes it's a bit confusing. Um, there's so many different packages. and um, Today, consumers are really spoiled for choice when it comes to mobile phones. But is that something that you're going to look at doing is like simplifying things and how you get a contract and everything? Because right now, when you're trying to upgrade a contract, it, I need to go uh, on, a, on, a, on a course to, to work out how to get a, a new contract because of all the data and all these things that have changed. So, okay, I think our, our pricing and, and pricing in general in the mobile industry has to evolve. And it's going to evolve into more integrated packages, which is voice, SMS, and data all integrated into one. Also, I think, you know, the need for simplicity is, is coming through very strongly from customers, not just in South Africa, but, but globally. So I think, you know, one of the things that we will, we will do is try and simplify the tariffs a lot more, make them simple and, and, and easier to, to, to understand. And, 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 but, but also the move towards the integrated pricing, I think is extremely important because, you know, as we move more in towards the data world, you know, we, we, have to, we have to ensure that voice, SMS, and data are fully integrated. Okay. Um, I'm getting lots and lots of questions on, on, on Twitter from uh, the, the Vodacom customers. It's at Vodacom. If you're watching this uh, feed live and you want to ask a question to the new CEO of Vodacom, uh, Shamil Yusuf, we are busy talking to him. We're doing a live Google Hangout. If you've just joined us, it's broadcasting live on YouTube. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, do so on, on, on Twitter, at Vodacom is the Twitter handle. Um, Shamil, you mentioned the, the, the massive um, uh, data explosion that you're talking about. Now, a question is coming from Hans Haupt, who wants to know about ETA, uh, LTA. Um, when is the ETA of LTE and the ETE of LTA? All these words. LTE, 4G, as many people know it. When can we expect to have LTE in South Africa? So I think we'll have LTE in, 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 in some of the cities by, before the end of the year. So, you know, I think you will we'll definitely see uh, LTE uh, in South Africa before the end of the year. And then obviously from there, we'll continue to grow it every month. More and more sites uh, will, will come on, online. Um, okay, one of the big issues for us uh, as well on LTE to get the full data experience is that we also need uh, spectrum. So, you know, I think one needs to also understand that there, that there isn't uh, available spectrum at this stage uh, that has been given to the operators to be able to, 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 to have a full experience on LTE. So we will have LTE and we will launch it, but we do need more spectrum so that we can grow it faster, quicker, and, and really, uh, you know, ensure that the, the full experience is there. Shamil, when you talk about spectrum, um, uh, you know most people don't have no clue what, what what spectrum is. I think spectrum is one of those things you look through a, a, a microscope and you see different colors, and that's such a key part of uh, keeping a stable network. Now, if you can just just explain to us in layman's language, when you talk about spectrum, are you are you talking about bringing new towers? Are you talking about adding new equipment to make LTE available? Because I mean, we've seen the networks go from two G to three G to HSPA and LTE is now where it's at at the moment, but what is all this spectrum stuff? How does it all work? So, so, so for because um, uh, mobile is a, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try and be an engineer because I'm not. But yeah, but basically, um, you know, for for a mobile operate for a mobile network to work, you need you need spectrum, which is basically radio frequencies ah, to be okay. able to utilize the utilize the, the the network. So today we have. Um, you know, two, uh, basically, uh, originally when we launched, we had 900, and then we went into 800, 1800 uh, in, in those frequencies. And that's what we called 2G. 3G is operating in the 2.1 megahertz uh, band. So that's, that's 3G. And now we're going into what we call 4G. And for 4G to work, we need spectrum in, in either in the 1800 band or in, uh, in 800 
or in, in 2.6. So sure. that's something we don't have today. We have 1800, but we, we, we have to basically take it away from the, the uh, current, uh, we currently utilize on the 2G network and, and what we call refarming and then re and, and reutilize that for LTE. Okay. And just to clarify, I mean, it's not Vodacom that's slowing down the process. You're waiting for that frequency to come in from ICASA, for example, who, who say, who allocated it and then say, Vodacom, this is what you can use. So you, you're waiting for that frequency to be allocated. Correct. So, so, so what needs to happen and what's been happening in Europe, for, for, for example, is that uh, the 800 megahertz uh, spectrum band is basically the broadcasters because it's been used by TV broadcasters. The TV, uh, the, the TV broadcasters have been moved off uh, that and, and been relocated to, 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 to another spectrum band. That is freed up that what we call the digital dividend, and that's been utilized to drive LTE. Okay, okay, that's really interesting. Now, wh when you're talking about all of these cell phone towers that we see all over the place, do you have to put up brand new towers for LTE, or do you just plug something into the existing infrastructure that you have, or do you have to build things uh, from, from brand new again? No, so what we've done is uh, for, for LTE to work, the base stations have to be um, upgraded to what we call single van, which is effectively a new technology. And, uh, you know, we, we're about 75% complete in terms of the entire network being LTE ready. Uh, and so that's, that's what we're doing. So it's, it's really a uh, upgrading the, the, the old technology to, to a new 2G, 3G site. Um, but, uh, but also has the capability to do 4G. At the same time, for LTE to work, you have to have fiber to the base station. So there's a lot of fiber uh, that we're rolling up. So to put into perspective, we've already uh, rolled out over 5,000 kilometers of, of, uh, of fiber um, into, into the network. So we're building our own fiber uh, in the back. So that when you have the, so, so to get the highest speeds, at the, in the back end, you need, you need bigger capacity pipes. Gee, it sounds very complicated. I mean, I'd, I'd love to know, um, I don't know, I don't think these stats are, are, are freely available, but I'm sure you guys could send them out one day. How many calls are made every day on the Vodacom network? How many millions of minutes? How many billions of SMSs? How much data is used? It must be quite fascinating. And it all comes back to the, the quality of the network and, and drop calls and that sort of thing. I mean, how do you go about uh, monitoring that and ensuring that that doesn't happen and improving on drop calls uh, on the Vodacom network? So, you know, firstly, I think one of the, one of the big issues for us is, is to make sure, so drop calls come from, from different things. Drop calls come from the fact that you could have, there's various elements in the network that could potentially, could, could potentially fail. So, so, for instance, if there's a break in a transmission link, uh, or on the older sites where we're still using telecom and we have copper, if someone steals the copper, those sites go down. You know, so you have to. You, so basically, that will then mean that the drop call ratio will 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 increase in that uh, in that particular area. Uh, also, the handset uh, drop calls are also very much dependent on the type of handset you're using as well. Some handsets are more. Uh, you know, you you'll have a higher drop call ratio than you'd have in 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 other handsets. Um, and then you know, you so so we have to take all these factors into account and continuously optimize the network to make sure. But as we pick up drop calls, we then go and try and fix that particular area. In addition to that, we also need some, some new sites. So if you don't, have, uh, you don't have the capability to do new sites, it becomes very difficult to solve some of the issues that we have uh, with drop calls. So for instance, uh, give an example in Bryanston, where it's extremely difficult to get approval for new sites, uh, it's, it then becomes more difficult to then improve the, uh, the drop call percentage. We've tried to come up with innovative ways of how to do it. So one of the things that we're looking at is, is you know, can we put uh, base stations on top of light poles or small, what we call small cells on top of light poles and so on. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we're working. So that will help us to improve the coverage in those particular areas where we can't build a big base station. Um, but now we need to, what we're working on is getting the approval from the councils and so on to be able to do that. 
Okay, that's quite interesting. Um, I'm getting lots of uh, uh, tweets over here, and if you've just joined us, by the way, we are talking to the new CEO of Vodacom, Shamil Yusuf, and we are broadcasting this live on YouTube, so it's basically talk to the CEO. We're having an informal session. We're taking your questions on Twitter that you might uh, have for the new CEO, and just be open and frank and say, this is what we want. We want prices to come down. We want this. We want that, and we're just having an open discussion. So, uh, Shamil, in terms of data, you mentioned how big data is going to be and it's actually quite incredible how much data we're using today are we going to see data prices coming down uh, coming down quite a bit more uh, on the Vodacom network and and how do how does our pricing compare to say um, you know uh, Europe for example I mean I was in America and some of the price plans give you an unlimited price plan on data but I mean on my travels when I compare it to Europe for example I, I find South Africa to be a little bit cheaper than Europe when it comes to data, but we more expensive than America, or is that a misconception? So I think it just depends. Um, so so I so to, to answer your question. Firstly, from from a pricing perspective, our pricing is now cheaper than than most of Europe in terms of uh, of pricing, especially when you're paying 49 rand for 500 megs, 99 rand for one gig, and 149 for two gigs. So those prices are extremely cheap. Uh, by by international by, by international standards, will pricing continue to come down? Yes. Uh, so so pricing will continue to come down as competition drives pricing down on the one side, and on the other side as we manage to get the costs uh, the costs down. So you, you know as we can put more fiber in the back uh, in the, in the back of the uh, of the base stations and more undersea capacity and so on, that allows us to 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 further drive uh, the, the the cost down. Okay, I'm getting lots I mean, of questions. Just, wait, sorry, just on your question on the states, I think yes. the important thing is that in, in the states uh, is that they don't sell smaller bundles. So you can buy a one gig, two gig, three gig, or, or, or unlimited, but they charge so they charge a lot more. So ah, you, know, okay. you pay fifty dollars or sixty dollars or whatever, and then you get you get a much bigger plan. But they don't have a number of the small uh, pricing plans that we have. And, I, and also a difference in pricing strategy. And I think what we've done uh, in South Africa, which I think, to, to be frank, I think has been much smarter, which is to sell through the line. So we let customers, if you need 10 megs, you buy 10 megs and you grow into to, to the amount that you need. In the States, you have to buy a gig or, or, or two gigs, and that, that's the difference between the two. Okay. Uh, Jerome Chetty has a good question, and it's one of my frustrations as well across all the networks, is that when you, when you, get, when you buy a bundle and you attach a bundle to your, uh, a data bundle to your contract, the out-of-bundle uh, rate is, is quite high. Is that going to come down as well eventually? Yes. Yeah, so, so I think in some of our new pricing schemes, you'll see a very different approach to the uh, out-of-bundle rates as we, as we go forward. Okay, great. Now, the Apple fanboys are hitting us big time here, Shamil. Everybody wants to know when the new iPhone 5 is coming to South Africa. And I'm holding one over here. It's one of them in the country that I'm busy playing with. But <laughs> he's smiling. Is it something that you know or something that you can't tell us? It's something I know which I can't tell you, but I can <laughs> say to you it will be before the end of the year. Okay, fantastic. And what about these nano sims? Because I know the, the you know the new uh, phones that are going to be coming out, including the iPhone five, has got a, a new sim card. It's a nano sim. Uh, are they going to be available on the Vodacom network? This is a question from Minar Peters, who wants to know. So the nano sims will be in store probably today or tomorrow. Uh, so we've already they've already arrived in country and they're being distributed to the stores as, as we speak. Okay, okay, that's cool. So they will be available as of this week. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Uh, another question coming in from Gary Mayer. I mean, with your experience in the business, uh, a smartphone, is, is 500 megs of data enough uh, on a smartphone every month when you look at how much we're using those smartphones and how much we're doing with them? So where we are today, yes. As we go forward, no. <laughs> so, you know, I think the, the average customer today is spending a lot less than 500 megs. But as we go forward, I think you know you, people will start to use the 500 megs and one gig and so on. So I think you know as 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 uh, as time evolves, as the months and, and, and years evolve, we'll see that that grow uh, quite substantially. And what about the unlimited data plans? Uh, somebody asked that question over here. Is that something that uh, Vodacom would look at in the future to buy an unlimited data plan? 
Um, at this stage, no. To, to be frank, I think if we if we created an unlimited data plan, the problem with it is that you always have uh, uh, abuse on those type of plans, which then affects the usage capability for the rest of the subscriber base. And I think that's that's extremely uh, it's extremely important that we have a consistent customer experience. Um, having had some experience with these type of uh, of plans in in in, in Spain where you had some kind of uh, unlimited version and then we had to, to try and bring it back. The, what happens is you end up with a situation where 1% of your customers are generating 30-40% of your, of your usage. You know, so so that, that, remember each base station only has a, a certain amount of capacity, then you have to add more and so on. So, it, 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 you know, I think where we are, maybe sometime in the future, but, but, but today, definitely not. Maybe maybe start it off in a place like Pofader and see how many people move to Pofader for unlimited data access. You know, you never know. But I, I would imagine geographically, South Africa must be a big challenge, Shamil. I mean, you look at like a, a region like Gauteng and how many people are concentrated in that area, and you obviously have to get your transmission and be able to provide the same services in Johannesburg to somebody in Pofader or a remote area. I mean, that's a challenge. South Africa is a big country. Yes, I mean, to put into perspective, Spain, uh, you know, just drawing comparison, Spain had 47 million people, South Africa has got 49 million people, um, and, but, but South Africa has double the size of Spain. So, you know, uh, so to, to, to cover the country is obviously a lot more difficult, and I think the technology itself also provides uh, some, some challenges, but, you know, uh, that's, that's what we do, so we need to make sure that, you know, we, we do that uh, effectively. So. I mean, just to understand that 3G, depending on the number of users that are on the cell, the cell mm -hmm. becomes smaller. So you've got to build the cells right next to each other and closer and closer, so that if the cell becomes smaller, the next cell picks it up and so on. And that's and, and that's why we have uh, you know a lot of clever engineers doing that that, that part of of, uh, of of building it. But yes, it, it, it is complex, and you know, and at the same time, you know, you have to put you have to build the fiber, you have to make sure that you have the the, the connectivity. Uh, you know, uh, and one of the reasons why we're building our own fiber is also to bring the cost down, because you know when we were leasing fiber from Telcom, it was a lot more expensive for us to uh, to to provide the service. Okay. So we've been able to sustain today's pricing, and we not you know started to invest in the network uh, and and building our own uh, transmission. Uh, you know, three years ago. Okay. Now. Uh, Vodacom uh, transformed, I think it was last year, or perhaps it was the year before, from Vodacom to Vodafone, which is the parent company, and Vodafone is massive around the world. Uh, how's that rebranding process gone? It's, it's, it's been a very interesting rebranding process in South Africa with one of the country's top brands, but it's, it's gone quite smoothly. Has it impacted your business at all? No, in fact, I think it's been quite positive because, you know, uh, firstly, just refreshing the brand and, and, and really... Uh, the move to red, which is a very powerful retail color, I think is uh, you know is, uh, has been, been been good for the company. But we're not we, we didn't just change the, uh, the the you know from blue to red. We also used it as a bit of a a, a transformation program uh, in terms of you know driving a different behavior within the company um, a, a, as well. So you know I think it's been very positive uh, from 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 that perspective and very well received from from from, from the customers. Okay, quite interesting. Um, we are talking to the new Vodacom CEO, Shamil Yusuf. If you've just joined us here on YouTube, we are broadcasting this live. Shamil is sitting in his office at uh, Vodacom HQ. You will see in the background, he's got all red. And we are broadcasting this live, as I mentioned. We're giving you the chance to ask uh, the questions on Twitter, on Facebook, on the YouTube channel. And uh, if you do miss this interview, you'll see it. It will be uh, kept up on YouTube so you can watch it at a later stage and um, you know, find out the different questions uh, and the different answers that Shamil has given us. A lot of <laughs> some some questions over here. And every time I see you, Shamil, you're using a different phone. Uh, so somebody wants to know what phones does Shamil use, and uh, what do you think of Android versus BlackBerry versus uh, iPhone versus Windows 8, all the different platforms. So what phone are you using at the moment? So I use the um, I use three phones actually. So I use um, a BlackBerry, an iPhone, and and an, uh, and a, a, a Samsung S3. Um, the you know I think each phone has its 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 benefits. Uh, for me, I personally you know I like the BlackBerry email, um, and and uh, but I but I find that the iPhone is much better for 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 apps. 
and for Facebook and for all of those, uh, you know, for for uh, for social media and so on, uh, and you know, for all my different apps and also for accessing the internet and so on, I use I use the iPhone. So I don't really use a, a laptop anymore. Uh, I either use my iPad or my iPhone, and 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 that, and that works quite quite brilliantly for for, for me. My That's backup serious. phone is the uh, is the S3, and I must say I'm, I'm quite enjoying the S3. I think um, you know um, just from the integration with uh, video and uh, and basically again also the emails. So when I look at a, a presentation, uh, I must say it's quite it's quite nice to be able to to do it on the uh, on the S3 and also to be able to edit that presentation. So you know I think each phone each phone really has its benefits. Um, and I think it's very, it's, it's, you know, it, it really depends on on on, uh, on on each customer, you know, what what they're looking for. It's actually quite amazing when you look at that S3 phone and the, you know, this new crop of smartphones that are coming out um, with such big screens. I mean, you've been in the business such a long time. If I'd said to you, Shamil, eight years ago, the new phones in eight years are going to have massive screens like this, you probably wouldn't have believed me. It's amazing how these devices have transformed over the years. It is, and, and you know, uh, okay, it's becoming more and more computers than than than, than phones. What yeah. the, what the complexity that comes with that? But you know, I think um, I think really we're going more towards uh, PC. I, I mean, I had uh, uh here last week from uh, BlackBerry, and you know, uh, we were having the discussion about uh, basically how the phones are now being looked at as PCs, and how you know they they saw uh, that the way they see it is is seeing it more as a, a mini PC. In a phone as they go forward. Oh, good. I'm glad you mentioned BlackBerry because that's going to be my next question. I think most of your smartphone users on the Vodacom network are probably BlackBerry users, um, and certainly BlackBerry. Uh, it's one of the. I think we're one of the strongest countries in the world right now. They are obviously going through their challenges elsewhere. Uh, is that price plan going to stay the same? Because I know that when you look at in other countries, you know, it's very rare that you see the kind of price plans we have over here. And I know that in the past it's been abused, and I know that uh, some users have been saying, oh, there's a cap now, but you actually don't need that much data to run a BlackBerry, do you? Um, well, it depends on what you're using it for. So, I mean, if you're using, uh, if you, uh, if you're using it to tether one of your other devices and so on, then, then, then you can use a lot of data mm -hmm. uh, on, on it. So it really depends on what you're doing, you know, what, what you're doing with the, uh, what, what, what the BlackBerry. You know, I mean, some people use it as hotspots. You know, and and then obviously um, <clears throat> that generates a lot of data. Yeah. Um, when, I think the the uh, you know we will align with whatever BlackBerry strategy is in terms of uh, of uh, of of the evolution. So you know, BlackBerry Ten is coming out uh, next year, and and I think you know they 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 will be an evolution in 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 in, in their pricing in their. Um, in, in, in the way they, they, they build the products. Cool. Now, it's interesting. I mean, that, that BlackBerry 10 device, you actually played with it in your office just the other day. What's it like? I must say, I thought it was, it was, it was awesome. It was really, really a nice device. And they've got some really clever things in the, in the device, um, which, which I think is quite, quite exciting. Okay, so we, we, we're wrapping up. We're talking to the CEO of Vodacom, the new CEO of, of Vodacom, Shamil Yusup. He's sitting in his office uh, in, in at Voda World, for those of you who know where that is in Midrand, and uh, he's talking to us. Uh, my name is Aki Anastasiu. It's a very informal discussion. Thank you very, very much for all your tweets and all the different questions that have come through. So just to summarize, uh, from now till the end of the year, you mentioned earlier that you're going to simplify the, the price plans and there's going to be some price reductions. Any idea when we can see these things happening? I, I would imagine by the end of the year. But uh, w what are you planning as the new CEO, just in a summary of what we've been discussing uh, for your customers until the end of the year? So I think you know we're, what what we're doing is we will obviously continue to have a number of promotions as we always do. But I think we need to we will we will ensure that you know we have uh, uh, that we're competitive in all in all our. Uh, in all our tariffs, in all our segments, so you know we we we, um, we will be launching new price plans and so on that that will will deliver on that promise. Okay. And really now, driving in the part of simplicity, the other part where we're putting a lot of focus on our key is really on the uh, on on improving the quality of the network consistently, 
um, and, and, you know, obviously by building more, building faster and so on, uh, but also, you know, putting a lot of focus on the top goal, seeing where we can, how we can improve because, you know, um, you know, the important thing for us is to, to con continuously try and, 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 and improve and, and, and lift the bar and raise the bar uh, for, 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 for our teams internally. Uh, Brilliant. So that's the second part. And the third part is really focusing on, on the customer experience. And, you know, to, to that end, we have a number of plans in place that we will be, you know, delivering on not just in the next couple of months, but going into the future as well. Obviously, we can't deliver everything in the next uh, in the next three to four months, but, you know, really improving the customer experience at all touch points. And there's clear plans and, 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 clear, uh, and clear goals that need to be achieved to, 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 to improve the customer experience in, in all the touch points, which is online, retail, and, 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 and through the call center. Okay, now somebody's upset with me because I didn't ask the question. So Sean Crookson wants to know about spam. Uh, I, I would presume you're talking about SMS spam, and sometimes it's beyond your control because that comes from the uh, Direct Marketing Association. You've got to put your lists and your names down on certain lists. But is SMS spam a big problem on your network? Well, you know, what we try and do, obviously, is uh, um, give customers the option, especially when it comes to the WASPs, where we can control the spam and, and get customers to opt out of getting some of these, these messages. So there is always the option for customers to, to opt out from, 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 from these type of services. Having said that, there's a lot of spam that happens that is uncontrollable, uh, that's coming from, you know, the direct marketing associations, as you say, giving your details to the local... Um, paint shop. You know, I always find it fascinating. I still get SMSs from the paint shop, and I haven't been to the paint shop today. You know, so you know those type of things. I think one, one, those are more difficult to control. You know, but so, what we can control is the bigger part, which is from the wasps spamming, um, and those things we can control. And I, and I would suggest to customers that if they're not happy with the messages they get, that they opt out from receiving messages on those particular providers. And I also think, you know, the common logical sense uh, prevails. You know, don't give out your number just to anybody out there because uh, you just don't know what you're going to receive. I mean, I've just won 150,000 pounds in the UK lottery, Shamil, so I'm going to end. the iPhones and you know people want me to to say Shamil you gotta give us an answer you're not gonna give us an answer you know what the answer is but uh, one of the good questions is over here is when the iPhone 5 does come out will the prices of the iPhone 4s drop so I, I, I think what we we're still getting all the pricing uh, from uh, uh, from from uh, Apple but it does look like that, that the uh, the four S prices will be cheaper than the uh, than the five. Okay, fantastic. And so Shamil, just be, from what we're seeing, is that the five will be slightly more expensive than than the four S today. Okay, that's quite interesting. That's quite interesting. I mean, Vodacom does amazing stuff on your foundations as well. You you sponsor quite a few football teams. I imagine those uh, sponsorships uh, will will continue into the future and 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 the engagement that you have with your customers on the social networks. I mean, I follow Vodacom on Twitter, and I think you guys do a great job of, of talking to your customers. And some of your customers are quite harsh, but you're obviously going to continue all of that uh, social engagement across those levels and increase it as well, I would imagine. Yes, very much so. And I think, you know, one of the, one of the things that we'd like to do is obviously increase the amount of, uh, of, of, of presence in social media, but also... You know, be able to respond quicker to queries and, and really, you know, grow grow uh, the social media. I think there's a number of, of clever things that we've done, and number of, of things that we can still do to to, to maximize, uh, you know, our our position in social media. Fantastic, Shamil. I, I know you've got a very busy day, and I'm looking at uh, the time over here, and I know we've only got you until uh, until uh, for the next three or so minutes. I'm not sure if we can squeeze any more questions in, but um, just to summarize what you said, I mean, uh, Vodacom is going to simplify things uh, going ahead into the future. We're looking at prices coming down. We're looking at uh, more aggressive pricing. I mean, one of the questions over here has come out saying that uh, international calls, for example, is that price going to be challenged as well? I know some of your competitors have been aggressive on that, but are you looking at uh, bringing down the cost of uh, international calls as well out of the Vodacom network? What 
I think what, uh, the response to, to that question should be that, you know, watch the space. Watch the space. <laughs> watch the space, because that one's going to come sooner rather than later. Wow, okay, I, I can't wait for it. So I, I'm, I'm glad that uh, there's going to be the aggression and the, and the price plans in the country. It's great for consumers because I think that's one thing that you know, people are always say, you know, the price pr plans need to come down, which is great. And I'm glad you're taking that orange juice and you're squeezing the orange juice out for the consumers. And you're quite accessible as well. If anybody wants to you know, get hold of Shamil Yusuf, the CEO, uh, obviously on the social networks, uh, you, you're obviously uh, on Twitter as well. What's your Twitter handle, by the way? Shamil Yusuf. <laughs> as simple as that. Shamil Yusuf. So if you ever want to get hold of Shamil, you just uh, Shamil Yusuf and be kind. You know, I, I see some people are get get really tense and passionate about their phones and their devices sometimes, and they they, they sometimes complain. Um, you know, without you know, sometimes with good reason, sometimes without good reason. But the thing is that you open and you engage with your customers. That's the point I'm trying to make. Yes. Uh, and you know, I, I think um, you know, using the different uh, tools, basically, you know, it's with feedback that we can we can continuously improve our service and really take back the feedback and and and, and solve it for the for, you know for the for, for both that customer and for the next batch of customers as well. Fantastic, uh, Shamil Yusuf, uh, CEO of Vodacom. Uh, thank you so much for coming and agreeing to do this on a public platform like this. Um, doing a YouTube Hangout is is uh, it's like being on television, really, because we've been broadcasting this live. Are you planning to do more of these going into the future when you announce your new price plans, when you announce different things? Is this something that we're going to see you doing more frequently? Yes, um, okay, I think it's very much part of our our plans going forward, and you know we'd like to and you know really also get feedback on what works, what doesn't work, so that we can continuously improve these sessions. Fantastic. Uh, Shamil Yusuf, uh, really appreciate your time. Thank you once again. Enjoy the rest of your day. I know you've got uh, lots of people waiting outside your office. What time does your day end, by the way? It sounds like you've got a hectic schedule. My, I normally leave the office between 8 and 9 uh, in the evening, <laughs> uh, and then you know, spend a little bit of time with the kids and then start working again. Fantastic. Shamil, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very, very much for your time. Thanks, Akhil. And, and that's it for this uh, Google Hangout, the uh, live YouTube Hangout, uh, live with the new CEO of Vodacom. My name is Aki Anastasiu. Thank you for joining us. Keep those questions coming in. It's at Vodacom is uh, the Twitter handle of Vodacom. And if you want to direct a question to Shamil, you can get him on Twitter as well. He's uh, at Shamil Yusuf. Just look it up. You'll find it there. And thank you for, enjoying, uh, for joining us today and engaging with us. Appreciate your time. Cheers, Shamil. Yes, thanks, Akeem.